Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome for the first time. My name is Emiko, aka That Hi-Fi Girl, and this right here, mama come. This is Victoria, hi sweetness, who is my hi-fi sidekick, otherwise known as the ultimate audiophile doggo. And today I wanted to talk to you about something that is really personal to me. So as many of you know, if you've been following my channel and uh, following my journey in hi-fi, you know that I come from the pro audio music creation side of things. I'm a recording artist, composer, songwriter, keyboard player, yada, yada, yada. And this is something that I wrote as an article actually for Enjoy the Music, wonderful publication uh, for which I am a contributor. And I thought that I would bring it to life for you all. And I'm linking the article below, so I hope that you'll go take a read of that when you're done watching this, and also subscribe to enjoy the music um, if you haven't already. So this is the story of when the music stopped and how the music started again in my life. I've been playing music since I was two years old. That's not a joke. I actually have uh, recently inherited boxes of vinyl and 78s and CDs and cassette tapes from my younger days. And when I was going through them, one of the things that I found was this cassette tape that says, Emmy playing the piano, 19, okay, 1983. Anyway, so now you know, now you know. I grew up playing classical music. I played Baroque harpsichord. I played professionally. I got out of the classical world quite young and I started performing with the band professionally um, in venues when I was still in like junior high school. So I've been doing this a very long time and I always knew that this was in my blood. I always knew this is what I wanted to do, but I never anticipated that I would actually stop listening to music because making it was making me burn out. So when I was about 19 years old, I was in the studio in New York recording my very first global release called Here Lies Tinkerbell. And this was a massive undertaking. Full band, we recorded to two inch tape, had a full production team. It was a big, big, big thing. And I would be in the studio from nine in the morning easily until sometimes one or two in the morning. So, you know, way more than 12 hours a day. And the studio was on the west side of Manhattan. I lived on the east side of Manhattan. And so in the middle of the night, I would walk home from about 43rd and 9th or 10th Avenue all the way to 42nd Street and 1st Avenue. So if you look at a map of Manhattan, I would literally go the entire width of the island. And this would continue for months because this was a fully orchestrated, large-scale production concept album. And after it was done, after the tracking was done, I went to my producer studio and we did all the overdubs. And then we mixed. And then we had to master. And then I had to go on the road and promote it. And somewhere along the line, I stopped listening to music. And I mean, I used to walk down the street with a Walkman or a Discman and headphones in and I was grooving. And then when we started to cut the record, that gradually went away because my ears were just burned out. And at first I thought, oh, I just need an ear break, right? It's listening fatigue. It's just a lot coming at me. But that wasn't the case. The music that was in my heart was starting to burn out also. And I wouldn't listen to the radio. I wouldn't listen to CDs. I wouldn't go out and see my friends perform. If there were bands on before me or after me on tour, I wouldn't stick around for their shows. Not out of disrespect, not because I didn't like them and, and I didn't think they were talented, but because I just, I couldn't, I couldn't take it. And then I realized I was starting to become antisocial. I didn't want the radio on in the car. If I was in the back of a cab, I would ask the cab driver to turn off the radio. Or if I was traveling with a friend and they wanted to listen to music, I just would say, can we just have silence for a bit? I wouldn't go out with my friends. I wouldn't go to restaurants and bars and clubs because there was loud music playing. And for anybody that's familiar with the lifestyle and the pace of New York City, it's 24-7, 365 nonstop all the time. At least it was when I was there uh, growing up. And so, Gradually, my life became governed by the sound of silence. 
And it wasn't until one day I was working with my, the same producer, and he had gotten a new pair of studio monitors. And he had gotten uh, this pair of Event 2020 Near Field Reference monitors that just sounded amazing. And the studio that we were working out of had these huge tannoys built into the wall right, right over the mix position. Just, oh. And they would crank it, it just sounded heavenly. So I looked in various catalogs to try to find something similar and I ended up getting a small pair of tannoys because that's I lived in a studio apartment and that's all that would fit and I had sort of a weird hybrid of studio gear plus some hi-fi gear and I put together a system right a sort of a patchwork quilt system and I got those tannoys and I remember turning on some music and I was very very apprehensive I turned on some music and I just listened I realized that because I had made specific choices in putting together, albeit a Frankenstein system at the time, my love of listening to music started to come back. And music was no longer just a craft for me. It became something that I could decouple myself from and on one hand be a creator, and on the other hand, not just be a listener, but be a music lover again. And I was able to listen without judgment, without preconceived notions, without the analytical mind. I was just able to listen to love to listen. And those tannoys are since long gone, but I do miss them a lot. My photographer at the time then gave me this wonderful pair of um, vintage, they were vintage then, they're probably antique now, floor standing speakers that he found at some curb alert, you know, take it away, it's free, if you can haul it, it's yours type of situation. And he brought them over to my apartment. He said, hey, I know you've really been into the tan noise. I thought you'd like these. And they're, even for tower speakers, they were quite modest in size. And so he said, they might fit. So we found a little place for them. And then I had a different listening experience. So, so in my tiny studio apartment that I had on the east side of Manhattan, I now had two hi-fi systems. Well, one sort of hybrid system and then one hi-fi system. And it was amazing because then I was able to go sort of from one corner area to another corner area and listen and have these comparative experiences. Now, fast forward to today, I have a system that I think uh, I can be extremely proud of and hold in such high regard, but I'll tell you all something. I, I do this occasionally, I go in waves. I, I'm sure many of you do this too. You sort of, you have a couple glasses of wine or you've just had a nice meal and you go upstairs and you're starting to fall asleep and you're still on your phone or your device. And I start looking at various online marketplaces for hi-fi components and also for music gear because I'm always trolling around for, for new stuff. And there were the Event 2020 monitors for sale. Some guy had them and he was downsizing and he wanted to give them a new home. And so I wrote to him right away and I said, you're not gonna believe this, but I've waited over 20 years to have this pair of monitors. And he said, oh my gosh. So I drove over the very next day. We tested them out. Now keep in mind, this is during the pandemic, okay? So he brought them outside into his car park of his apartment complex and managed to sort of jerry-rig this little tiny system just to prove to me that they work. And we listened to some tunes and just stood there for a minute and I recalled the story for him and his, his face just, he was so touched. He goes, I'm so glad that they're going to you because to know that somebody somebody wants these monitors and that there's a story attached to them for you and that this is one area where your life is sort of coming full circle he said it's just i couldn't ask for them to go to a better place because these are monitors that i've had for a very long time and i just i didn't want to throw them out i didn't want to donate them i just really wanted them to have a good home so they are currently in my studio and when i think about how important and how vital and I cannot stress this enough when I truly truly think about the role that hi-fi played in my life so that I could re-examine and revisit my love of listening to music for enjoyment for an outlet for peace for healing for encouragement for for getting all my feelings out I hate to think that if I hadn't had those pieces I would be living 
a pretty silent life right now other than the music that I work on professionally. So I just wanted to make this video, I think it's short and sweet, to just share this with you all because I feel like it's really important that people understand that there's a deeper level to hi-fi and to being an audiophile. And it's something so deeply personal and so human. I hope that somehow this speaks to you and that you can find that moment when you got to truly actualize and realize what it is to love being a listener. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are not one of my existing subscribers. Ring the bell to turn your notifications on and leave me a comment because aside from helping the algorithm and pushing this video out to other people, I love to hear from you what your experiences are in Hi-Fi, how, how your aha light bulb moments happened when you were listening to things, uh, certain components, certain songs, so on and so forth. And if you have any questions about gear, components, things like that, you can also type that in below. And let's connect! So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you again very soon. Bye!